Greetings students. This will be a very short video in which I'll make three comments about the assessment one. The first comment is about the sign notation for the geometry. Second comment is about the sign notation for the bending moments. And then the third comment is about why this is important. Okay, so I'm not going to repeat everything in the previous video. Essentially, we had the composite beam, the triangle on top of the rectangle. And then many people were getting confused about what is the meaning of the notation. Essentially, you take a coordinate system somewhere in between the centroids. The coordinates of all the points above the axis, the z-axis, is positive. The coordinates of all the points below the axis is negative. So typically you have a beam, the x-axis is along the direction of the, the longitudinal axis of the beam, the y-axis is positive upwards, and the z-axis is in the right-hand sense. So there is always a neutral axis somewhere in the middle of the beam. Um, the y values above the neutral axis is positive. The y values below the neutral axis is negative. And what happens is um, that's the geometry. That's how it works. So looking at the cross section, if x is in the direction along the beam, y is positive. A positive bending moment in an anticlockwise direction it causes compression on the top surface of the beam and tension on the bottom surface. So if M is given as 6,000 or 7,000, which is a positive, with the standard sign convention, M would then be in an anticlockwise direction. The contrary is if M is negative, it is acting in the clockwise direction, and then it'll cause tension on the top surface and compression on the bottom. So positive bending moments, compression on the top, it squashes the surface, and tension at the bottom, it stretches the surface. So in your textbook, um, that is your notation. You've got your beam in the horizontal, positive bending moment causes compressive stress on the top, tension on the bottom, uh, compressive stress, uh, negative bending moment is the other way around, it stretches the beam on the top and it uh, squashes at the bottom. So just remember and be familiar with the notation of the bending moments and of course the notation of the, the geometry. The distances are not scalar, they are vectors because these distances are either positive or negative. You can't give a scalar 30 millimeters, you have to specify is it above or is it below, and the above or the below comes through through the algebraic sign. Is it positive? Is H2 negative? H2 is then below. H1 is positive, therefore H1 is above. If you miss out the, the, the sign of the quantity, you will get the wrong answer for the stress. And we can explain why you'll get the wrong answer for the stress. So you've got your beam, and if you don't specify if y is positive or negative, you won't know whether there is a tensile stress or a compressive stress. Composite beams are not like steel beams. Composite beams are typically wood or some sort of polymer or some sort of resin. And in practical terms, what happens is that a material, a composite material, will have a different tensile strength and a different compressive stress. So if you don't know what is the tensile strength, uh, if, or if it's a compressive stress, you basically don't know if the beam is going to fail. And why that will happen is that for certain values of y, which is, let's say, y1, above the neutral axis, that's positive, um, a negative times a positive will be a negative, 
and then typically there'll be compressive stresses at the top if there's a positive bending moment. The tricky part is that the bottom part of the, the beam, certain values of Y is positive above the axis and certain values of Y is negative below the axis. What that physically means is for certain regions of the bot bottom uh, section of the beam, it could be in compression and it could also be in tension. And if you don't specify the sign of H1 and H2, you literally don't know whether it's in tension or compression. So for the sake of argument, there could be, let's say, an, aer an, aer an aeroplane's wing, which is composed of some sort of low-weight composite material, the, the beams inside the wing itself. Now, depending on how the, the external load on the wing is, the wing of the aeroplane could be intentional compression, but you don't know because there are different str uh, strengths, intention and compression, so you literally don't know if the wing is going to break down. And that is why it is important to always understand the notation for a bending moment, positive or negative, and the notation for a geometry, positive or negative. So let me show you how this would work in practice. You can write a computer program. Um, I use uh, GNU Octave because I'm comfortable. You can also use MATLAB and Mathematica and Python. The, the details of the computer program is not really a big deal. So I've entered in some co uh, computer code over here. The computer code is not important. I am now going to run the program. Um, let's just, so the computer program is running. This is my geometry. This is the calculations that we did in the first assignment, the bending moments and the stresses, all in SI units. And with the computer program, I can literally go up to 10 or 12 or 15 decimal places. Um, what I will do is, um, this is the geometry, and the computer program has now worked out the distances from the centroids and the neutral axis. So you have your triangle, you have your rectangle, we had the particular geometry which was specified, we worked out the various geometrical parameters and we worked out the stresses. Um, Basically, what's happening is there's a neutral axis and the distances above uh, the z-axis, this is the z-axis, uh, all the points above this is positive, all the points below this is negative. So for the green, you see everything is a positive value, and if everything is a positive value, y is positive, negative times positive, sigma 1, um, all the stresses in the triangle would be negative. And some stresses in the rectangle, the yellow, would be positive, some would be negative, depending on the value. So let's go ahead and enter in some values. Um, I'm going to take 15 points on the triangle and I will take 30 points on the um, don't worry about the details. I, I wrote a very rough computer program. So I'm just going to pick 15 points in the triangle. Okay, then I'm going to pick 30 points for the rectangle.
about halfway through. Okay, so I, I didn't really worry about doing a proper mesh and uh, grid refinement and all of that stuff. So I, I wrote the program completely from scratch in Octave. And here's the point I'm making. So this was our geometry that we solved. Um, I just took some various rough geometry. And here's what you should note. This is the important thing. So, um, physically, what is going on is the following. You have your triangle on the top. You have your rectangle at the bottom. You have a neutral axis somewhere in between the centroids. These are positive distances. And the equation is a minus mye minus m y1 e1 over the product of all of that stuff and negative times all of this is positive so negative times y and if you look at it very carefully these are positives a negative times a positive is a negative and for these values of y above the neutral axis these are negative stresses Therefore, the top is in compression. You would only know the top is in compression if you put positive values above the axis. Now, if we look at the section 2, certain values are positive above the axis. So you have to specify H3 is positive and H1 is positive. A negative times a positive is a negative. Therefore, for these values, that are above the axis, positive values, negative times the positive is negative. Therefore, this region is in compression if you correctly accounted for the sign notation of H. Below the neutral axis, H2 is negative, H4 is negative, in which case the stress would be a negative times the value of Y, which is negative, Negative times a negative is a positive, in which case, if you look carefully, the values below the neutral axis are positive, in which case that means it is in tension. So for this region, part of it is in compression, part of it is in tension. If you just assume the absolute scalar values, and you didn't account for the sign notation, you, wouldn't lit you literally would not know which part of the beam is in tension and which part is in compression. And the practical implication is that the beam will fail in certain regions. It'll crush itself or it'll stretch itself and destroy itself. So you have to know what is in tension and compression. And the only way of knowing what is in tension and compression and in order to determine if the beam is going to fail is by correctly accounting for the sign notation. And of course, the corresponding sign notation for the bending moment. Okay, and um, very quickly, this is what it would look like approximately, because I haven't really worried about using a proper mesh. So there is the triangle, and uh, basically, all the stresses in the horizontal 
direction for z is all constant. So it's more or less constant. The only reason why it's looking slightly different is because I took a very rough mesh. But the, the key point is the following. The triangle is in blue, and this is in compression. Part of the rectangle is also in compression. Part of it goes towards zero stress. And then at the bottom part, it is in tension. So that is what it looks like. So that's the beam, the triangle, the rectangle. And as you go along the beam, you will get the different values of stress. OK, so that's the beam. That's the top part of the beam. It is in negative, which is negative. Part of the top part of the beam is also negative, according to the color. As we go through the middle, the neutral axis, part of the stress would be zero. So there is a green value, some of it is zero. And then of course, as we go downwards uh, for the low Y values, it becomes positive stress. Okay, students, that was the concept that I wanted to quickly clarify. So there were three points. Uh, point number one, if the sign convention is utilized just a bending moment by itself, it's assumed to be positive. And the physical meaning of positive bending moments is anti-clockwise in the standard XYZ coordinate system. XYZ, positive anti-clockwise, negative bending moment, clockwise, apply the sign convention of compression and tension. Second point, you must always take into account whether the values are positive or negative. If you don't, you'll get the wrong answer. And a final point, um, the values of the sign notation physically mean uh, if something is in tension or compression. All right, students, that is the end of the video. Thank you very much.